In this episode, the new Lucid Air Sapphire. Bugatti sends off its legendary W16 and Rivian snips. Welcome to episode 113 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Eric? Mr. Michael Rell, I have an update for you. Oh? The SLS, the Space Launch System. Okay. Remember how we talked about, I don't know, I think three week episodes ago. I went mm-hmm. to try to watch the launch. Yes. Then it got delayed. And failed miserably. Yeah, they had problems. Oof. Hydrogen leaks, valve problems, yada, yada, yada. Uh, update, they're still having problems. What? They tried to launch again, same exact problem. How have they not fixed the problem? I don't know. But this is also a problem that occurred on the space shuttle. It's similar hardware, and they still have not figured it out. How have they not figured it out? Uh, I'm asking the same question. <laughs> Most of the internet is asking the same question. Like, are there not 15 gazillion sensors and things on there? That should tell you literally every single thing about it? There are, but they keep saying hydrogen's a very small molecule and fits through very small gaps. Uh, Yes, you learned this on the space shuttle. You launched 135 of them. You could have figured that out by now. Yeah, that, I feel like, mm, mmm. In the meantime, SpaceX just keeps on sending up Starlink satellites on the pad next to them without any problems. (laughs) It's not a good look. Pew, pew, They've launched pew. like five in the time that the SLS has been on the pad. Ooh. Yeah. It's not a good look. That's not very good. And you could buy something like 40 to 50 of the SpaceX launches for the launch of one SLS. Mm. Oof. Mm. Yeah. I'll keep you in the loop, though. Please do. Yeah. All right, so I do have some news about Lucid. Tesla is one of their main competitors, right? Okay. So Lucid has announced that they're making a plaid killer. And yes, you heard me correctly, a plaid killer. All right, now you pique my interest. It's called the Lucid Air Sapphire. Not a printer. I kind of like it. A precious stone. I kind of like it. Is sapphire your birthstone? Uh, whatever April is. I don't know what January I don't know. is either. So if you're listening or watching, let us know if sapphire is either January or April's birthstone. If it is, then I guess we need to buy one. Okay. So the Lucid Air Sapphire. <laughs> Let's get back to that. So this is touting to be the plaid killer because Lucid's saying they're going to make this car launch faster than the Tesla Model S Plaid, as well as a Bugatti Chiron. Hmm. Yikes, dude. That's freaking fast. Faster than the Plaid is impressively fast. If they actually pull it off, I suspect they're going to run into the whole rollout situation, but Mm. whatever. That's besides the point here. Yeah, we talked about that. Was it six foot? Is that what it is? I think it's something like that. Yeah. At which it goes from zero to like six or seven miles an hour in yeah. that time. It's kind of a lot. Uh, but the Bugatti, I don't remember how fast that was. Stupid was, fast. Yeah. I don't think it was the sub two second mark, which Tesla was claiming with their rollout shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Okay. Tell me more. Yeah. So this was revealed during the Monterey Car Week, which we kind of covered some of those cars on. But we didn't get a chance to really talk about the Lucid and... I think it's worth talking about. A yep. lot of the pictures we see are of it on track. Oh. So, hmm. At Laguna Seca. Look at that. Yeah. Interesting. Going down to Corkscrew and everything. It looks a bit racier than the Plaid, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It looks a bit racier than the original Lucid Air. Mm-hmm. Um, so, this Lucid Air Sapphire is supposed to have, and they don't have an official figure, but quote unquote, greater than. 1,200 horsepower. Greater than. What's the current one have? 1,111. So what's that? Uh, like 89 horsepower? horsepower more? Yeah, under 100 horsepower. That's mm. not That's not all that much. Maybe it'll have 1,211. It'll be exactly 100 more. It could be. But when you're getting to the point where you have 1,000, the percentage difference in your horsepower number is kind of the big deal. Yeah. And when you 
go under 10% increase in horsepower. Whoop de doo. Is it really noticeable? I don't I don't yeah. think so. Like your car, a hundred horsepower is like gaining by like fifty percent. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Right. right. The percentage change is huge. But hmm. if you're gaining by like eight and a half percent, nine percent. I do suspect though, if they're making big changes to make this as fast as possible, uh the current air is probably very luxury oriented. Mm-hmm. I don't imagine it's as race heavy. It shouldn't be. It's not designed to be. It's also not marketed to be. So if they did try to track this or race this or make it stiffened up a little faster, a little more snappy, it probably would make a big difference suspension-wise, chassis-wise, and tuning-wise. But the horsepower numbers seem a little odd to me. That's where I think the big increase is coming. I think it's coming not so much in the power, but how it utilizes the power. Yes. Right? I mean, I'm guessing that if it's supposed to be a faster version, they're going to make, you know, thinner carpet and make the glass a little thinner and a carbon fiber roof and make it lighter and stiffer in all the right places, not so much just make it million horsepower. Right. Bigger, better brakes. The arrow is going to be better. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, from my knowledge, the current Lucid Air is a dual motor, so front rear. I think so. This is going to be a three motor. Oh? Two rear motors. Okay. That was the next question. Yes. Interesting. You can do some cool torque vectoring with that. That's actually part of it. Yep. They are doing that specifically so they have torque vectoring. Yes. You can do neat stuff with that to rotate the rear of the car through corners Mm -hmm. uh, and slow the inside to get it to rotate more as well. Mm -hmm. Neat. I wonder why they just didn't go four, though. Maybe for weight savings? That's my guess. Yeah. Right. I I would imagine it makes it more sporty to not be four four motors because it's not... My guess here is that it won't understeer as much as some other EVs if it doesn't have two full motors hanging over the front. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, physics should mean that that won't understeer quite as badly. Right. Right. Um, now, here's where I'm not super huge. It's going to start at about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Well, so let's... I'm going to say that one more time. It's going to start at about two hundred and fifty thousand, a quarter of a million dollars. Hmm. Still a little experiment. Tesla.com. <laughs> Tesla.com. Okay. You want a Model S? I do. No, I don't. But for this experiment, I do. We're doing the experiment. And for a Plaid, plaid? 128 grand. Hmm. Okay. But by the time you spec it, you're what, 140? I mean, yeah, 150 at most. Self-driving's kind of whatever at this point. Sure, we can add it, right? Sure. Just add everything. 150. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. Okay. So, that's that. Hmm. Not so sure. According to the uh, according to Lucid, uh, this new Lucid Air Sapphire, it will do 0 to 60 in much less than 2 seconds. It'll do 0 to 100 in under 4 seconds. That that's quick. Is properly quick. And they expect a sub nine second quarter mile so a l- less than nine second quarter mile what was the zero to 60 uh two point under one. two seconds mm. okay and they are saying it's going to reach top speed of 200 miles per hour okay well that's <laughs> kind of impressive because most electric cars don't top out right right they don't have top end usually not no. usually not right so for comparison the like the plaid the quickest model s plaid uh, apparently that is truly a 2.1 second 0 to 60, right? right? Um, it's 0 to 100 in 4.3 seconds and a quarter mile in 9.4 seconds. Whew. 9.4 is fast for a quarter mile. It is, but if the new Lucid Air Sapphire is under 9, that's faster. Yep. Yep. Plaid killer. I like seeing this. I like seeing the competition in this space. Uh, this is not going to be the last we hear of this company trying to one-up Tesla. And I bet you it's not the last we hear of Tesla trying to one-up Lucid. Uh, But you eventually Rivian gets in the game and 
in many years, eventually the other car manufacturers catch up and start to get in this crazy fast electric car space. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Do you like it? The looks. (laughs) Do I like the car? No, it's an electric vehicle, but I like it more than a Tesla. Mm -hmm. I like the looks more than the Tesla. More specifically, I like that picture we're looking at right there, which is a picture of the interior. If you're a driver, what do you hold on to in this car? <laughs> this, the yoke. Mm, it's not <laughs> a yoke. It's a steering wheel. Right. I, it already wins. It doesn't have a yoke. You don't want to fly your Tesla? No. I, this will literally win just simply because it doesn't have a yoke. Uh, I agree with you. The interior is better. Tesla is very plain. But they're well known for going the minimalist thing and trying to keep as little options and as much on the touchscreen as possible. This does look a little more luxury, which is great. There's a massive screen in front of the driver. It curves around you. Looks pretty high tech, pretty futury. Looks good. The bolstering seems okay. It f- feels more luxury to me than the Tesla, just from looking at it. Yes, but my living room sofa feels more luxury than a Tesla. <laughs> the office chairs we're sitting on right now feel more luxury than a Tesla. You don't have to get the yoke in the Model S, by the way. I believe in the plaid you do. Do you? Yeah. Mm. In their standard Model S, you don't. But in the plaid, if you would like a plaid, you would like a yoke. Mm. And That seems silly. Wait, uh, yes. Yeah. This automatically wins because it doesn't have a yoke. And that's that, <laughs> that literally will solve the whole argument for me. Okay. Plus... It has a screen in front of the driver and not just a barren dashboard, right? Yes. I do like the look of it better than the Tesla. Again, it's still an electric vehicle, so it still doesn't really suit me, but I just like this a lot more than the Tesla. It does look very aerodynamic. It looks way better, in my opinion. Like, way better. And the Lucid, I think single Lucid that I've seen around town, I know you've seen a couple, uh, I like the look of them a lot. I'm a fan of them. Mm-hmm. You can definitely tell one's coming up behind you with the big light bar in the front. Yeah. They look sleek. Yeah. No, I'm I'm a fan of the look. For an EV, I'm a fan of the looks. Mm-hmm. Now, hmm. it's not a Porsche 911 GT3 RS or anything, but it'll okay. do. It'll do. So eventually we'll get some real numbers on this, and uh, maybe we'll circle back around to it. I bet you they don't make many of them. Mm, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Who knows? Neat car, nonetheless. Very. So, So what else? Let's move on. To a Bugatti. (laughs) Okay. We're going all in the luxury realm today. There's something called the Bugatti Mistral, I think, is how you say it. I don't know. But, apparently, it is the end of the W16 for Bugatti, which is a bit of a shame. That is a shame. Yeah, so the essentially the swan song of Bugatti's eight liter quad turbo <laughs> W16 engine. Again, eight frigging liters. That's four of my engines. Literally. Four of my engines, which is a two liter turbo, four two liter turbos with the turboses. My goodness. Like, I. <laughs> Um, my brain, right? So you take <laughs> two of mine, and you just join them together, and then do that again. And you got a W16. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of cylinders. Those are big cylinders, and it's a quad turbo? Yes. Four turbochargers. Okay. But that's what that's been in like all the Bugattis for a while. Right. Which it's a, it's a shame that it's being dead, because that's the whole point. You buy a Bugatti, because it's just... The most of everything you could put in a car. How many radiators would you like? Take them all. Yeah, How many turbos? Like you want four? I think right. they have 16 radiators or yeah, something crazy. something ridiculous, right? Greater right. than 10, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. But the new Bugatti Mistral. It's a roadster. So this is that send-off of the W16, like I said. That W16 does have 1,578 horsepower. It's the same amount that's in the Chiron Jeez. and all the other Bugattis, right? Uh, they're only making 99 of these Mistrals. That's and fine. 
they're not how I would say cheap. Okay. They're $5 million each. At this point, <laughs> what does price matter if you're getting a Bugatti? It doesn't. Right. Not only are they all $5 million each, they're only making 99 of them, and they're all sold out. That was fast. Yeah. Poof. It's gone. I'm not surprised. But I got to think, if I'm a a car collector and an investor in that asset class, I would have to imagine this would be a hugely performing asset. Mm -hmm. It's the last W16 Bugatti's going to make. I bet you you buy it for five million, you can flip it for eleven. Eleven. Poof. I bet you. Everyone's gonna want the last of the biggest engine in like ever, right? Mm-hmm. If you're that much of a wealthy car collector, yaha. Wow. If I was them, I'd buy ninety nine of them if I could, and retire <laughs> forever because you just sell ninety eight of them and keep one. That's crazy. Yeah. Five million. It is expected to be faster than the Chiron, though. The Chiron does like 257 miles an hour or something like that. Yeah. This is supposed to be over 260. It's not confirmed, but rumors say it's going to be over 260 miles an hour top speed. They're just edging it out. Just edging it out. Mm-hmm. Little bit here and there. It's a lot. And it's a roadster. Can you imagine doing 260 miles an hour with a top down? No. <laughs> Put your no. hand up and you lose your arm. Yeah. <laughs> Just rips it out of the socket. Boom. Gone. Goodbye. From what I recall, the Veyron was running into tire limitations with their top speed runs. I believe so. Yeah. I, I believe, like, I think it's Michelin has to make a specific tire for the Bugatti because the tires that you and I would buy and put on the BRZ, the GLI, or hell, even the 911. I ain't going to work. Nope. They can't withstand that amount of force and pressure at 260 miles per hour. That's crazy fast. Uh, the fast. only the only tires that I can think that come close to that would be top fuel dragsters. Yeah. But the radius of those tires is significantly bigger. So the G loading is way different. Yep. Hmm. I don't get it. I don't understand it. To me, it looks, well, I mean, in terms of the looks of this Mistral, it looks like the the Bugatti we talked about a while ago. Remember something called the La Voiture Noire? Yes. That was, uh, we talked about that. It kind of looks like if you mixed the that La Voiture Noire with the Devo, I feel like that's what this car looks like. And for those listening, just do a quick Google of what those look like. And I feel like this is kind of like the bastard love child of those two cars. Yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of cool looking. It looks really cool. Huh. I do worry about this brand in the future, though. Yes, and that's my next point. Because once the production of the Mistral is complete, Bugatti will become an EV. Yeah. What happens then is a big question in my head. <sighs> See, I... Gee. I don't think it's going to hold the same mystique. I don't know. Is the brand does the brand have enough brand recognition and brand power to be its own entity and not be tied to the W16 or the ICE engines? So, that's the question. Personally, no. I agree. I don't think it does. I think the whole point you buy a Bugatti is because you're buying the just the most of everything you possibly can get in a car right like it's uh, jeremy clarkson said it best on top gear when he tested the veyron it's like concord mm-hmm. right do you remember concord it would do supersonic flights across the atlantic right yep it was just the most of everything you could get the fastest most luxurious most everything this is the fastest most powerful most luxurious most everything you can in cars and when you fail to have the W16, which is the heart and soul of it, what makes this any different than the Lucid Air Sapphire we just talked about? I don't know. The brand. It has to be the brand, right? Yeah. I, and I don't think Bugatti has enough brand to carry them without a W16. 
we'll see. Maybe these will go turn into crazy top speed fan cars or something like that, right? Maybe they'll pull out some weird tech and make it something unique. But if they're going to stick to the top speed record, EV is going to be tough. Yeah. They're not great with that. Uh, I don't think that, I think that if that was possible, they would have already done it. But it doesn't feel like that's possible to me. And I don't know where they go from here. We'll see. There's going to be a bunch of brands that have to go through that reckoning of who are we now as an EV company. Yep. And there are going to be brands that will get the axe from that. No yep. doubt. They will die a slow death. I fear Bugatti is going to be one of them. I think you could be right. But I also fear that about nearly every current car company. A lot of them. Yeah. You Name a car company. I fear that it could be the death of them. Yeah. Yeah. The, the only ones that I can think that are are already the ones that are in the space. Yeah. Hmm. Makes you wonder. Yeah. Neat car. I suspect this will be worth a lot of money. I don't think it'll be worth as much as you're saying, but it will be very dependent on how their brand fares after the EV transition. Let me put it this way. If they stick to their word and truly do make this the last W16 and they don't just keep doing like... Over here in the States, we have the NFL. We have the National Football League, right? Mm -hmm. We have a, a a football player that at one point did this whole retiring and comebacking thing. His name is Brett Favre. Mm -hmm. As long as Bugatti doesn't do the Brett Favre with the W16 and say, this is the last one, and then wait a year. Oh, no, wait, we're kidding. Oh, no, this is the last one. Oh, no, wait, we got another one. Oh, wait, one more time. Right? If they do truly make this the last W16... I'm thinking this is going to be hot cakes for the investor market. Could be. It could be. Hmm. Neat car. Yep. Shall we move on? Let's do it. Okay. So, Derek, I have a new use for Rivian for you. Okay. Okay. So, you know, it's got like the transmission tunnel and all that. Mm -hmm. But I have a much more interesting use case for them. What if... We took a Rivian, and you used it to cut your balls off. What? You heard me. What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so, apparently, out in Austin, Texas, here in the U.S. of A., there was a doctor in Austin, Texas. Uh, and this doctor had a power outage, at least in the city of Austin. And he had a patient come in. And the patient had an appointment that he could not reschedule. This appointment was for a vasectomy. Ah. The old snip snip. Okay. So during this power outage and this whole patient that just didn't need to, didn't want to reschedule it, the doctor said, I know what we'll do. We'll use the Rivian. Oh boy. So the doctor hooked the Rivian up to all of his neutering devices mm -hmm. and used a Rivian to essentially snip this old boy. What the heck? Okay. You can actually see pictures from the doctor's tweet himself where the doctor hooked, he plugged in his Rivian and like use that to like oh my uh, god how first of all how did this make a news article <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you're using a car to cut things and snip things and oh my god what is likely <laughs> the first rivian powered vasectomy oh my goodness derek i know how much you love evs yeah when the time comes. Yeah. Are you going to use a Rivian? No. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> There's something to be said about being able to plug your car in for backup power. But of all the use cases, a doctor's office is kind of a... I don't know about that one. <laughs> That's kind of a... I wouldn't do that. So, a little blurb. Apparently, the doctor is named Dr. Christopher Yang. Uh, and he describes himself as, quote, a recovering tech geek 
turned physician. Okay. So when the power went out in Austin, Texas, and his patient said, I really don't want to reschedule, I can't, he said, all right, let's hook her up. <laughs> plugged it, plugged it, I don't, plugged in the vasectomy tools to the electric pickup truck and did what you do to people when you need to have an electric vehicle. Hmm. Hmm. It's an interesting idea. Uh, I will say you, in theory, uh, if you have a Tesla or a Rivian or an F-150 Lightning and power goes out and you have the means to reverse the charge back into your house or use it to run things, (laughs) it will run things for like days on end. There's a lot of power in those vehicles. I mean, they've got a bunch of those 120 valve sockets. Yeah. And they're like eight kilowatt hours or something like that uh they will run a house an average size house for something like two and a half to three days Sheesh. even with ac with fridge with all that stuff so i guess for a quick little operation a little snip i mean that's nothing no you're not going to drain any of the battery no <laughs> not for that uh, but if you were running ac on the building for a long time yeah you're going to drain the battery oh my it's it's an interesting concept to say, okay, I have three days worth of backup power in my garage if I need it, right? You have power to do whatever you'd like to do with the power. Whatever. Sure, he did the doctor thing this time. But if power went out of your house and you had the opportunity, why let the fridge spoil? Why? At my house, sure. Yeah. At the doctor's office. It's a weird no. use case. That's a weird use case. Could you, If a doctor came up to me and said, you know... We could take your x-ray, or we could do this procedure, but I got to plug in to my electric vehicle. I just walk out the door. Nope. Sorry. Don't want that. Nope. 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 Done. Let me ask you this question. What if he had a 911 outside and an inverter in it? Sure. Of course. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, of course. Well, that depends on the spec of the 911. Oh, sure. Because now I'm just going to be picky. Sure. If it was a paint to sample color, then sure, I'd let him use that. Yes, the alternator's just fine. Yeah. <laughs> You're such a goober. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, that's the last news article. The Rivian that was uh, powering a vasectomy. He solved the problem. He I, solved the problem at hand. I suppose it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so that's going to wrap us up for episode 113 of the We Are Auto Show. So thanks so much for watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, leave us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button while you're there, and drop a comment on the video. Let us know, would you get a vasectomy from Rivian? Powered by Rivian. No. Yeah. Let's clarify that. Yeah. If you're listening on audio only, uh, leave us five-star rating and a review on your platform of choice. That'd be amazing. Much appreciate that. And I know you've got your phone out, right? You're on social. We are too. Follow us on the socials. Facebook is We Are Auto. YouTube is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. And our website, which is amazing, is We Are Auto.io. Catch all your favorite past races there. So, again, thanks so much. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.